Pleasure. The nature of the soul is to look for pleasure. And Lord Krishna's form is, is fully spiritual. So he is also looking for pleasure. And this is why he appears in the form of a child. Lord Krishna, as the Supreme Lord, has all kinds of powers and he can transform himself into different ages, he can appear as a child. He can be the, the baby for Mother Yashoda. And this is the Leela here in the case of Lord Damodar, that Krishna is coming as a child and he is enjoying having a mother and father, just like children enjoy to have a mother and father. Lord Krishna is also thinks why they should have a mother and father. I should also have a mother and father. So Lord Krishna arranges for those people who have the devotion in that way, they become his mother and father. So Mother Yashoda has great love for Lord Krishna and she can only think of Krishna as her child. Earlier, Lord Krishna had appeared in Mathura now in Mathura, in the prison house of Kamsa, he appeared as the child of Vasudev and Devaki. At that time, he appeared in a four-armed form. So that was a little different from how he appears in Vrindavu with Nanda and Yashoda. He enjoys more loving affection when he takes the form of a child. You know, if your child has four arms, it will be a different rule. It will be difficult, right? To bring in, if you have, if you're a mother and your child has four arms, isn't it? what will people think? What will the neighbors say? <laughs> what will everybody they'll think? And you, oh, you have a funny child, you know. He has a, he's like God, he's like Narai, he has four arms. So Lord Krishna wants to enjoy the love of his mother and he appears as a child with two arms, just like a human being. Actually, he is the original person. We are all made in the image of God. He is the original person and we come from him. So our form is like his, not that 
he is taking a form like us, but rather we have a form like him. In the spiritual world, in Vaikuntha, at Goloka, there's a planet called Goloka where Lord Krishna resides with his eternal devotees. And there Lord Krishna enjoys having pastimes with his devotees. Mother Yashoda is also there, but she comes, when Lord Krishna comes in this world, Mother Yashoda also comes to take part in the pastimes, in the Leela with Lord Krishna. So this Leela of Damodara takes place one day, actually it took place on the Diwali day. We celebrated Diwali just a few days ago, a very special day, very auspicious day. And they say that's the day Lord Rama came back from exile. That's also the day Lord Krishna killed the demon named Narakasur. And that's also a day in which uh, they had begun building the golden temple in Amritsa, where the Sikhs lived. That they had built, begun the construction there on Diwali day. And among the Jains, they say that Mahavir, he achieved the perfection of his, his samadhi on the Diwali day. So Diwali is a very special day. And Lord Krishna also enacted this Damodar Leela on Diwali day. So what happened exactly was Mother Yashoda was feeding her child, baby Krishna. Lord Krishna enjoyed to drink the breast milk from his mother. But Mother Yashoda was also taking care of cows. She was, she was also concerned to give the best milk for her son. So she had a group of cows who gave the best milk, very creamy and sweet milk. And she would save that milk to give to Lord Krishna. But she was boiling the milk. And at the same time, Lord Krishna had come to her because he was hungry and he wanted to drink her breast milk. So Lord Krishna was drinking the breast milk, but Mother Yashoda wanted to go and take care of the milk because the milk was boiling over. So she put down Lord Krishna and went to take care of the milk. So Lord Krishna became a little angry at this because he had not fully satisfied himself. He'd been drinking his mother's milk and he hadn't finished. He'd not fully satisfied himself. And Mother Yashoda put him down and went off to take care of the milk. Lord Krishna got angry. Mother Yashoda went away, left Lord Krishna laying there on the floor. So Lord Krishna looked around, what could he do? And he picked up a little stone and he broke the churning pot, which Mother Yashoda was, where she was churning the milk into butter. And Lord Krishna began to help himself to the butter. And the butter was spilling everywhere. Lord Krishna took some of the butter, fed it to monkeys. And the, the butter was running everywhere. It was all over Krishna's feet. Lord Krishna understood when his mother comes, she's not going to be very happy to see all this. So he thought, I'd better go and hide. But so he got up, picked himself up and went off into another room, leaving his footprints with all the butter as he walked. So a little while later, Mother Yashoda came back and saw the pot broken. And she thought how her child was such a rascal. She thought, my son is so naughty. He's broken this pot. Now he's gone away to hide. He's so clever. He's hiding himself because he knows I'll be angry at him. So Mother Yashoda could follow him though. She saw the footprints of the butter and she followed the footprints and then she saw her son sitting not far away and he was sitting with monkeys, giving the butter to the monkeys. So Mother Yashoda came towards him and she was carrying a stick because she was using the stick to churn the milk into butter. 
So when she came coming towards Lord Krishna, Lord Krishna saw his mother coming and he was afraid because he saw his mother carrying a big stick and he knew he'd broken the pot. So he thought, oh, she's got a big stick, she's going to beat me. So Lord Krishna jumped up and ran. Mother Yashoda saw him running away. Mother Yashoda shouted at him, you come back here, you little rascal. You're a monkey, little monkey. And Lord Krishna said, well, if I'm a monkey, I'm going to go to the forest. I'll go and live in the forest. She said, you're the king of thieves. And Lord Krishna said, what do I have to steal? Your butter's so bad, even the monkeys don't like it. Like this, there were joking words exchanged between Lord Krishna and Mother Yashoda. So Mother Yashoda was running after Krishna. Lord Krishna is the form of the absolute truth. Even the great yogis who travel at the speed of the mind, they can never approach even the tips of the toes of his lotus feet. But Mother Yashoda, because of her pure devotion, she was able to capture the hand of Lord Krishna. Understand the position of this lady, this mother Yashoda, that she is the greatest, she's a great devotee, greater even than Brahma and Lord Shiva, Mother Yashoda. She is such a wonderful devotee that she could capture Lord Krishna and she could control Krishna. Lord Krishna is called Ajita, meaning he's never conquered, but he does become conquered by the pure love of his devotees. We see, for example, how Arjuna at Kurukshetra when they had come for the battle of Kurukshetra, Lord Krishna became the chariot. He became the chariot driver for Lord for Arjuna, and Arjuna is giving instructions to Krishna. He's telling Krishna, "Bring my chariot into the middle of the battlefield. I want to see everyone who is assembled here." And Lord Krishna is obediently driving the chariot and takes Lord Krishna into the middle of the battlefield. And of course, at that time, Lord Krishna saw Grandfather Bhishma and his teacher Drona, and this caused the bewilderment of Arjuna. And Arjuna was perplexed, and Lord Krishna spoke Bhagavad Gita to him. Another person who conquers Lord Krishna is Srimati Radharani who is considered the foremost of all the gopis. It is that the gopis of Braja are the greatest devotees, that they love Krishna more than anything. They, sac they would sacrifice everything for Krishna. For a woman, her chastity is very important. But the gopis of Braja, they sacrifice their chastity for Lord Krishna. And the foremost of all the gopis, the leader of the gopis, is Srimati Radharani. It is said that Radharani personifies the Ladini Shakti, or the pleasure energy of Lord Krishna. It is also said that originally Radha and Krishna were one, but they separated themselves eternally for the pleasure. Lord Krishna. So Ra Lord Krishna is known as Madan Mohan, one who conquers Cupid. But Srimati Radharani is called Madan Mohan Mohini, that she conquers even the conqueror of Cupid. She conquers Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna is controlled by pure love and devotion. And the purpose of this month of Damodar is for all of us to try to begin to cultivate that devotion for Lord Krishna. Devotion is actually there in our hearts, but it has to be awakened. And 
part of the process of awakening is hearing. We have to hear about the lila and the activities, the qualities of Lord Krishna. So during this month of Kartik, we're spending time to worship Lord Krishna in this form, and we worship him by hearing about the lila of Damodar, and at the same time, we also sing a, one, a wonderful song, which is taken from the scriptures. It, it's a sense in Sanskrit, and it describes the whole lila of Damodar. And at that time also, we offer a light, we offer a lamp to Lord Krishna. The offering of lamps is very significant. Just like when Lord Rama came back to Ayodhya at the end of his exile, everyone offered lamps. When we offer our tea, we always offer the lamp, the ghee lamp is offered. The light conquers darkness. So in the same way, knowledge conquers ignorance. Good conquers over evil. So we always like to offer lamps to the Lord for his pleasure. There's the pastime which tells about a little girl who became, she was born in a royal family as a princess. She was the only daughter of her father who had many sons. And she had the habit during this month of Kartik, she would put lights everywhere. She would set lamps everywhere. Just like at Diwali, people, we can see how people have decorated their homes and they have lights around the window and the doorways. And so we come, we celebrate Diwali. So this girl, the little girl, her name was Lalitika, and she was a princess, and she would set lamps not just on Diwali day, but every day during the month of Kartik. And she would do it, she would put lamps in the doorways, she would put lamps uh, in the temples, all over the temples, and she would put lamps all alongside the river banks, and wherever she could find a suitable place, she was putting lamps there. So people were surprised that every day she would set thousands of thousands of lamps around. And they asked her, why you do this? So she explained to them, she told them, she said, you have to understand who I was in my previous life. Right? Do any of you know your previous life? You know, you don't usually know, right? So she was a princess, but she said, in my previous life, I was a little mouse. And she said, I was a mouse and, and I was in a temple and I was very hungry. I hadn't eaten for days. I was so hungry. But it happened in that temple, someone offered a lamp. They had a, a, a cotton wick soaked in ghee and they were burning the cotton. And with the ghee on it, it was burning. So the mouse went and began to take, eat the cotton and enjoy the ghee because it was so hungry. But what happened was when the mouse was eating this cotton wick, a cat appeared. Of course, the cat's the enemy of the mice. And the mouse immediately fled. But at the same time, the mouse carried the ghee wick in its mouth. And, but when the mouse carried the giwik, the giwik was burning and it set fire to the fur on the body of the mouse and the mouse became ablaze. And that mouse was, it came, it came running in front of the deity, in front of the altar where Lord Krishna was standing. And the, this way the mouse died. And this happened during the month of Karti. So the little girl described, she said that in my last life, I was a mouse. And somehow by some chance, my body became a light, became a flame. I was offered to Lord, to the Lord. She said, 
now I'm born in this very nice family. She was very beautiful, very opulent. She had everything materially. She said, just because I offered my body in the form of a mouse, because my body uh, became on fire in front of Lord Krishna, she said, by that one lamp, I got this birth. She said, now I want to offer thousands of lights everywhere. I want to get the supreme benefit from Lord Krishna. What is the supreme benefit? The ultimate benefit we can get from Lord Krishna is once we give up this body, we won't come back again in this world. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes that when we understand the birth and the activities of Lord Krishna, then upon giving up this body, we never come back again in this world. We have one book, actually, which is published by our society. It's called Coming Back, The Science of Reincarnation. <clears throat> Coming back, you know, because generally we give up one body and then we come back, just like the mouse gave up the body, came back as Lalitika, came back as a princess. So the question is raised at the end of the book, what is the success in life? The success in life is don't come back, <laughs> right? You come back, come back again into the material world. Again, you have to accept a material body. And again, there is old age, there is disease, there is also ultimately death. That is the nature of material existence. But by worship of Lord Damodar and by developing our devotion for, for the Lord, the result can be that when we leave this world, we will go back to be with Lord Damodar. We can go to the, the spiritual world, the kingdom of God, which is, we call it Goloka Vrindavan. There is Gokula, which is Vrindavan in this world, and there's Goloka, which is in the spiritual world. And so this month of Dhammadar is a very valuable opportunity for all of us to develop devotion. And that devotion, as I said, we get a hundred times the benefit we do any other time. It's, a, it's like a sale. You know that sometimes a big store will have a sale and they'll offer the goods at a discount price. So in the same way, Lord Krishna is having a sale during the month of Karti. He's making the path of devotion very easy for all of us, that we should all take advantage. And we certainly try to do every day. We offer this Damodar prayer. We sing the Damodar song. We offer lamps to the Lord. And we pray that we can also develop devotion. Just like Mother Yashoda has devotion for Lord Krishna, we want to also develop devotion for him. It is natural to have devotion. In the material world, we have devotion for our children. Some people have no children, they have a dog. <laughs> They're devoted to cats and dogs. But ultimately, our real devotion is meant for Lord Krishna. Our eternal relationship is with him. This world is temporary, but there is an eternal world. And we can go back. We have come from there. We've come into this world. We can go back to the spiritual world, to the eternal abode, and live there with Lord Damodar, with Lord Krishna, with Srinathji. The Lord is there for everyone. He's waiting for us to come to be with him. So to help all of us to go there, this Dhammadar month is very important for us. Are there any questions? Yeah. 
experience. Um, earlier, you mentioned that um, more Krishna and Radha they separated eternally. They were. I said they were originally one, but they became two. Right. So they are separated now, or are they eternally together? Well, they're yeah in in the in the spiritual world in the eternal abode of the Lord, they're eternal. They they live together. That they, they enjoy their pastimes there with each yeah. other eternally. Thank you. And you see in our temples, you will see in the temples we have Radha with Krishna. So. Lord Krishna appears in the temple along with Radha, right? It's Radha Krishna temple. We worship the Lord along with Srimati Radha. And when we chant the names of the Lord, we chant the Maha Mantra, we chant Hare Krishna. So Hare is evocative form of Hara, and Hara is referring to the pleasure energy. So there's no difference between chanting Radha Krishna and Hare Krishna. So, that for some time, that there is sometimes lila of separation. Lord Krishna feels the separation from Srimati Radharani. And sometimes Srimati Radharani will feel also separation from Lord Krishna. But that feeling of separation helps to increase the love. Because after separation, then comes union. Then they come together again. Not that they're eternally separated. But the separation helps to increase the love which they have for Krishna. And that's just in Krishna Leela. You see that Krishna grew, grew up in Vrindavan. But at one point, he went off to Mathura. So they, the gopis... They, they were very unhappy. They didn't want Krishna to leave them. Why did Krishna go to Mathura? Because by separating himself, he increased their love for him. <clears throat> we say, there's a common saying, absence makes the heart go, grow fonder. And familiarity breeds contempt. <laughs> yeah. So you appreciate someone more when there's separation. Yes. Well, his relationship with the father, we hear, for example, how at the time of Govardhan Puja, Nanda Maharaj was doing Indra Yagya. So Lord Krishna told, he discussed with his father that you don't need to worship Indra. Nanda Maharaj was saying, well, no, we do. We need the rain. And Indra is the god of rain. And with rain, if we have good rain, then there'll be more grass. And we have to feed the cows. If there's no grass, how will we feed the cows? And so we have to satisfy Indra. So this Indra Yagya is very important. Nanda Maharaj said like this to Lord Krishna. However, Lord Krishna argued back, oh, no, no, you don't need to worship Indra. Look, the rain falls everywhere. It falls on the sea. There's no need of water there, but still the water falls, the rain falls also on the sea. You don't need to worship Indra. Lord Krishna told his father, he said, just do your work. Lord Krishna uh, taught something called the uh, karma mimamsa philosophy. He said, you just, if you just do your work, everything will come about. You do your duty and you'll get the result. Of course, we know it's not true. It doesn't always happen like that. You know, sometimes we do everything properly, but we're not successful. Anyway, Lord Krishna told Nanda Maharaj that please 
don't waste your time worshipping Indra. The things we should be worshipping are the cows and the brahmanas and Govardhan Hill. And Lord Krishna told his father, you should worship this Govardhan Hill because this Govardhan Hill is providing so many things for the cows. The water which the cows drink, the grasses which they eat, and the fruits and the roots which grow on the Govardhan Hill. And there's so many places for the cows and there's caves and the shelter. So the Govardhan Hill was very important. And Lord Krishna told Nanda Maharaj, worship the Govardhan Hill. And Lord, Lord Krishna is only a child, seven years old at this time. But still Nanda Maharaj wants to please Lord. At first Nanda Maharaj said, but we'll do both. Let's do both. We'll, we'll worship the Govardhan Hill and worship Indra as well. But Krishna said, no, there's not enough time. And we need all the paraphernalia to worship Govardhan Hill. So Lord Krishna did not want Nanda Maharaj to worship Indra because Vrindavan is the holy place. Nanda Maharaj is his pure devotee. And the pure devotees in the holy place, they should not worship other gods. They should only worship Lord Krishna and those things in relation to Krishna. So in this way, Lord Krishna convinced Nanda Maharaj just to worship the Govardhan Hill. So this was one Leela with Nanda Maharaj. And later on, there was other pastimes like uh, after Krishna had picked up the Govardhan Hill, then the people of Vrindavan, they said to Nanda Maharaj, you know, your son is very amazing. He's done so many amazing things. We think he must be a demigod. We think he must be some kind of great personality from the higher planets. Who is he? And Nanda Maharaj said, well, you don't know my son. You know, he's very mischievous. <laughs> you know, he often, he's been stealing the butter and he, he gives a lot of trouble, you know, I, I, he's just a boy, you know, don't take him too seriously. <laughs> but he did tell them also that Gargamuni told Nanda Maharaj at the time of the birth of Lord Krishna that this child had taken birth in different ages, in different colors. And he said, he, this child, there will be many obstacles, but by the help of this child, you will overcome all the obstacles. So in this way, Nanda Maharaj had been told by Gargamuni about the great potency of Lord Krishna. And Nanda Maharaj told the people of Vrindavan that this is what Gargamuni said about my son. So, so there are some, yeah, and you see Lord Krishna sometimes is a very obedient child. He will carry Nanda Maharaj's shoes on his head. And he'll come and bring the shoes, his slippers for Nanda Maharaj, playing the part of the obedient son to Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda. So both are great devotees, Nanda Maharaj and Yashoda. They're both, they're the, eternally the parents of Lord Krishna. They're the ones who get to be with Krishna through his childhood. Okay? So maybe we'll do Damodar. Yes, I just only got the religion. What inspired you to follow the path of Lord Krishna? Yes, well, I read the Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> I had the Bhagavad Gita. I'd been reading it. I couldn't understand it. But then I got a book called the, another book by Srila Prabhupada. And after I read that book, I really understood it. After reading Prabhupada's books, I felt this is real knowledge. I actually can understand what he's talking about. You know, I was looking, I was reading books by different spiritual teachers, but none of them really impressed me until I read Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada's books. And I thought that everything he said made perfect sense. And so it convinced me that I should go to the temple. And so I used to go and visit the temple in London. 
and I would go there and every day they would be having classes and I would hear from them. I would hear and I could ask, ask questions and they would answer me. So I became convinced by association. And I used to chant, I began chanting from that time. So by chanting, I saw that I could feel the potency of the chanting of the name of Krishna. So Krishna consciousness is in the heart of everyone. And anyone who, if you take to, the, if you try this process, you follow the process, you'll see it works. It's actually a fact that you can awaken the consciousness of Krishna and you become devoted to Krishna. But it just requires hearing and chanting. You have to hear from the association of devotees. We do have devotees here in Kuwait. You can associate with them and hear from them regularly. And you have to also practice yourself. Just like we have beads. So we chant on the beads. You see, we have a, a, a mala here. And you know this mala is very important for us. Every day we chant on the beads. Do this chanting. This is called japa. And we do this chanting. This is especially important in the Kali Yuga, in this age of Kali, to chant the name. Chant the Mahamantra. There are many names of God, but why chant Krishna's name? Because Krishna's name is the most powerful over all the names. It is said the 1,000 names of Vishnu is equal to one name of Lord Brahma. Right? Lord Shiva said that to his wife. He told his own wife that. Because Parvati was going to chant Vishnu Sahasranam. But Lord Shiva told her, Rame, Rame, Namo, Rame, Sahasranam, Abhistu, Yam, Sri, Rama, Nama, Varani. Right, you know, yeah. 1,000 names of Vishnu is equal to one name of Lord Rama. And then three names of Lord Rama is equal to one name of Lord Krishna. It is Lord Krishna who is the original Swayam Bhagavan and Lord Ramachandra. He is coming from him, the expansion. From him. So the holy name of Krishna is there in the Maha Mantra. You chant the Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna and Rama. Rama can be Lord Ramachandra. It may also be Bala Rama, who is the brother of Krishna. But Rama can also refer to Lord Krishna as well, because Rama means reservoir of all pleasure, and that is Lord Krishna's position. Yeah. So chanting Hare Krishna, it convinces, it convinces me that by chanting. So we make a vow when Prabhupada initiated us, when I was initiated. Prabhupada told me every day you chant 16 rounds. So I've been doing that faithfully. And in that way, I've stayed in Krishna consciousness. All right. Any other question? Very nice to hear your questions. Thank you very much. So now we're going to offer the Damodar prayer. Yes. Have we got the, the prayer printed out for everyone? Yes, we have got it. Thank <laughs> you.